Hola, buenos días. Eh, buenos días. Bueno, para los que no me conozcan, soy Ricardo Millet, eh, jefe de análisis y planificación de turismo Valencia, que es el área que está organizando este ciclo de jornadas, de las que ya hemos hecho esa es la segunda, nos quedan otras tres. Hemos escuchado hoy eh, ya una conferencia muy interesante de una persona con tanto bagaje como es Oscar Perelli y hemos tenido la suerte de ver eh, las opiniones y los planes de los máximos responsables de turismo de cinco de los grandes destinos urbanos españoles. Pero para acabar este acto habíamos pensado eh, en llamar a, un, a alguien de fuera de España, ¿no? porque vemos que el mismo debate que está surgiendo en los destinos urbanos españoles está surgiendo en toda Europa, en todo el continente. Y por ello hemos invitado a Jan van der Borg, eh, que ha venido, aunque tenía bastantes dificultades, pero ha querido estar aquí con nosotros. Jan, eh, además, es el profesor de la Universidad de Lovaina y de la Universidad de Venecia, de Economía del Turismo, preside el Comité Ejecutivo del European Institute for Comparative Urban Research, es miembro del Comité Asesor de Visit Flanders, el eh, holandés, eh, como consultor ha trabajado para el Consejo de Europa, la Comisión Europea y la UNESCO, y además, Jan, es asesor de la ciudad de Venecia, del alcalde de la ciudad de Venecia, en temas de desarrollo de turismo sostenible. Entonces, hemos planteado este último acto eh, como un diálogo entre Jan y María José Viñals, a la que muchos conocéis, porque es una catedrática destacada de la Universidad Politécnica. Ahora eh, da clases eh, de conservación del patrimonio y de ciencias ambientales y anteriormente dio en turismo, eh, por lo que alguno de vosotros la habéis tenido de profesora. Entonces, eh, María José ha sido directora de numerosos títulos propios de la Politécnica en España y en 11 países del mundo. Sus temas de investigación giran en torno a la puesta en valor y planificación del patrimonio cultural y natural y ha trabajado en la interpretación y en la gestión turística de sitios patrimoniales en varios continentes. Eh, después del diálogo dejaremos un poco de tiempo para alguna pregunta, aunque ya vamos justos. Entonces, bueno, dejo paso a Jan y a María José Viñals eh, para que hagan su diálogo, eh, que va a ser en inglés. ¿Ahora? Sí. Bueno, buenos días a todos. Eh, muchas gracias por la amable presentación que ha hecho Ricardo Millet. Eh, nosotros, como bien habíamos dicho eh, y pensado, eh, se ha hecho una presentación de la radiografía o de la situación de destinos urbanos en nuestro país, destinos muy destacados, pero también queríamos, es un fenómeno, este del turismo tiene unos rasgos comunes eh, a todos los continentes a nivel internacional y queríamos también presentar eh, un punto de vista que no fuera el nuestro de nuestro país, que fuera de uno de los destinos turísticos más importantes del mundo, que lo tenemos aquí cercano, y el hecho de haber elegido eh, la ciudad de Venecia en particular, de la que Jan nos hablará, es porque todos vosotros en vuestro cerebro tenéis un archivo abierto con el nombre Venecia, y porque todos seguramente la habéis visitado, y en más de una ocasión seguramente. Y aquellos que habéis tenido ocasión de, de visitarla con un lapso de, de tiempo importante, habréis visto esta evolución que, que ha experimentado la ciudad y que es lo que le vamos a pedir a Jan que nos, que nos cuente un poco. Y porque es curioso, porque vosotros en, en esta, esta percepción que vais a tener la tenéis como turistas, no como residentes, eh, y él os va a contar eh, la, la versión eh, que se maneja desde los organismos gestores y administrativos de la ciudad de, de Venecia. También, por supuesto, podrá aportar algunas informaciones. Él trabaja en, en los Países Bajos, porque Jan es de origen holandés. Entiende que español, un poco, ¿eh? habla italiano perfectamente y también habla holandés e inglés. Entonces, eh, vamos a entendernos entre todos eh, seguro. Él va, va a hacer sus comentarios en inglés pero luego las preguntas las vais a poder hacer pues, en cualquiera de, est de estas lenguas que, que hemos comentado. Desde luego, si es holandés, lo tendremos un poco crudo todos, pero bueno, en las demás vamos a ir todos bien. Entonces, yo quería empezar eh, preguntándole o, o pidiéndole a Jan que hiciera una, un breve resumen de lo que ha sucedido, eh, de, de la evolución que ha experimentado la ciudad de Venecia 
en los últimos 25 años, por ejemplo, que es desde cuándo más o menos se tienen datos oficiales y fiables sobre el fenómeno turístico en la ciudad. Y luego ya pasaremos a ver qué medidas, qué medidas ha puesto en marcha la ciudad. Está claro que, como aquí se ha dicho, cada ciudad tiene, es un caso diferente y los problemas eh, más evidentes son distintos y la manera de resolverlos también es diferente. O sea, en el turismo no hay recetas estándares que se extrapolen directamente a todos los casos igual. Hay una casuística muy grande, es todo muy transversal a muchos fenómenos y hay que tenerlos todos en cuenta y no son iguales en todos los sitios. Pero bueno, yo creo que es un ejemplo bastante ilustrativo que, que del cual podemos, podemos aprender cosas y yo creo que él también, oyendo todo lo que se ha hablado hoy, pues también ha tomado nota de, de todo lo que está sucediendo en España. Así es que, sin más dilación, yo le voy a pedir que, que haga una... If you can uh, address some, some words about the current situation about the city in Venice in relation with tourism, okay? Thank you. I, thank you very much. Is it working? No, it isn't. It is? Okay. Uh, I will try to speak quite slowly and clearly so that you can uh, all understand. I'm very sorry that I don't speak Spanish, some Italian. But first of all, I would like really to thank you for having me invited here in, uh, in, Val in uh, Valencia, which is a city that I've been uh, visiting uh, quite a lot in the past, uh, and with we, we continue from Venice to work together with, uh, with the local authorities and university. So it is really a pleasure to, uh, to be here. Just some, uh, some history because I think that is uh, important to make you understand why I've been invited here. I'm studying urban tourism since uh, 1986, and I was always studying two types of cities. The Ven Venice type of city, uh, Venice, Bruges, Salzburg, the smaller Sevilla, the smaller art cities, and how they were reacting on uh, tourism, and also the bigger cities that were like willing to invest in the quality of life, in requalification, uh, and in, um, and in, of course, tourism development. The Rotterdam, uh, Barcelona, Genova, and uh, Manchester kind of cities that were at that moment not so attractive for international visitors, but they were really seeing a lot of perspective in development. And what I uh, now feel, and you were saying that before, uh, is becoming interesting, is that uh, tourism, the tourism industry and tourism demand is changing so fast that these cities, Barcelona, Berlin, maybe even Valencia in the, in the future, are catching up, they seem to catch up with the Venice kind of cities and uh, they are increasingly sharing some of the problems. Of course, you cannot sort of just uh, transfer one city's experience to the other cities, but they're catching up with the Venice kind of places, and they're experiencing the same kind of problems, the same kind of issues, and they are looking at the same kind of solutions. So this is, I think, one very important starting point, which makes it, of course, for many places in the world, interesting to look at uh, what I would say a nightmare scenario, which is at, at this moment unsustainable tourism development in Venice. Uh, now, uh, just to describe very quickly what has happened in Venice over the three last decades, Venice uh, has been visited by a lot of uh, people. Venice is the emblematic kind of tourism destination. I don't know whether you saw the pictures of the cruise uh, ships uh, before. Uh, two of those pictures were uh, of, uh, of, of Venice, of Venetian cruisers. Um, and what we have seen is that Venice uh, has, in a very uh, short time, uh, developed from 10 million visitors per year to almost 30 million, 33 million people per year visiting the historical center. Now, the historical center is very small for those of you who know Venice. There's now, at the moment, just 50,000 people living in the historical center, and that is down from 160,000 
in the 60s. So Venice is increasingly losing inhabitants and is increasingly gaining visitors. It is not only a quantitative problem of the number of visitors that comes to Venice, but it's also a qualitative problem. We heard about sort of the value-added kind of tourism that Spanish uh, cities are trying to attract. Uh, but what we especially uh, see in Venice is that residential tourism remains constant. That is, the people that live as a tourist in one of Venice's hotels or a bed and breakfast is remaining constant over time and the growth in the number of visitors is, is especially uh, in the excursionist sphere. People who come to Venice just for the day and I would sort of count cruise tourism as a very aggressive form of excursionism as well. So at the moment, just 20% of the 30, pe 30 million people that come to Venice per year, just 20% is staying in a hotel room. Now this situation is frustrating the local economy, but is also frustrating Venetians, the inhabitants of Venice, because they really don't feel any empathy, they don't feel any connection with the people who come to Venice just for a couple of hours and flag Venice on their bucket list. And um, tell something, uh, Jan. In relation with these uh, houses that are empty now, the people is not living more, the, the, the residents, what is happening with these kind of uh, houses that are abandoned by the natives of, of, of the city? Well, we have heard this uh, also this morning, this, this conflict between visitors and, of course, uh, locals is, of course, uh, very much present on the local housing market. Because, obviously, in Venice, all the empty spaces that uh, were uh, abandoned by not only inhabitants, but also local uh, artisanal activities, handicraft or industry, all these spaces have been filled up by tourism, tourism-related activities. And especially a lot of housing has been transformed into a bed and breakfast. A lot of um, economic activities have been just substituted by low-quality, made-in-China kind of, uh, of, uh, of, of shops. Now this, of course, uh, is, is, is the impression that you get uh, when you come to Venice. Venice is really looking like uh, a very busy theme park, very busy Disneyland, but without the management of Disneyland, which is something this I think the local administrators have to reflect this is upon. This my, my question. If uh, this loss of uh, the inhabitants is uh, linked to the loss of identity of the city. Yes, now that is, that is the consequence that I think we should be very careful about. I think local inhabitants uh, are part of the DNA of a place, which is also something that visitors are increasingly looking for. We are now living in this experimental uh, kind of uh, tourism demand stage. So people actually want to get in touch with locals, but if there's no sort of local uh, living in a place anymore, but it's just like staged kind of, uh, of, of, of city life, then of course I think that Venice will in the end lose its attractiveness, its attractiveness for an increasing part of the, of the international tourist demand. Indeed, the sort of the added value residential tourism market is actually leaving Venice, is looking for other places to mm. have their urban or city trips to. And that is, uh, that is a, a, a big, um, a big uh, threat to the continu continuity, not only of Venice, but also to uh, Venice as a destination for tourism. Mm. Let me add something, because it's not only the fact that there's less housing, uh, for Venetians, but it's also a fact that there are no jobs yeah. for Venetians in Venice that actually do not want to work as waiters or, uh, yeah. or, or, or cheap souvenir sellers and so forth. It's also a social 
economical problem. And also this problem is fueled by the dominance of the tourism industry, which is actually sort of so powerful in Venice that um, there's no other activity in Venice that can contrast, compete mm. with tourism for, for example, um, the central space. And uh, could you uh, tell something about what kind of measures, governance measures, from the local authorities are taken or are implemented to solve or to address these kind of problems? I think the local administration has a very uh, different colors of administration. I'm not sort of blaming one part or the, the other political party. I think they have a lot of responsibilities in the fact that Venice is now indeed uh, becoming one of the world's sort of bad practices, practices with, with regard to sustainable tourism. I think the local administration has always underestimated the, um, the risk of unsustainable tourism development. And uh, what I see, and I see it in other places as well, also in Spain, is that they usually find a scapegoat, a, a black sheep, a, a, a symptom of uh, non-sustainable tourism uh, development to blame everything on. First of all, uh, in the end of the 80s and the 90s, we had the Pink Floyd concert. That yeah. was, uh, ah, this is, we have to event. Um, second was the, with the Berlin Wall being broken down, uh, bus tourists from Eastern Europe, oh, this was a dram and a dram, and we have to, we have to. Then it was cruise tourism. And yes. now every, everybody is complaining about Airbnb. But this is all, these are all symptoms of a disease which is much more serious. It's really a, symptoms of the sort of not uh, planned, not organized way of allowing your place to live together with tourism development. And it has been mentioned a couple of times previously, uh, and it was, I think, a, I have a, a slightly different vision. It's not the lack of management as such. It's not a too uh, strong focus on just promotion and marketing. Yes. But I would say in most places, people thought that you just could leave tourist development to improvisation. And you just improvise. This is the market is going to solve all kinds of problems. That is Now, this is not happening because the core, this is an economist speaking here, the core of the tourism product that destinations are offering are public goods. They are goods belonging to everybody. They are goods that are offered at a zero price, so everybody can. That's also a good thing, eh? it's not only, not only that. But this means, if the core is a public good, that as a local administration, you have to manage it, you have to plan, you have to control, you have to measure. And that has actually not happened in Venice. Um. And, and the consequences are now so uh, severe that the collective costs linked to tourism development are much bigger than the collective benefits that actually oh Venice is uh, receiving per year. So here we have a very distinct mismatch that is starting to frustrate and irritate an increasing amount of people. And even the sort of the high quality part of the tourism industry is now teaming up with the local inhabitants to say now enough is enough. Now let's look at the very specific measures. One of the few measures against tourism that has been taken in the 80s uh, was a hotel stop. Now this is very popular as a measure also in many uh, European places. I mean, one of the first things that the new mayor of Barcelona knew, it's not new and she's not new anymore, mm. but one of the, we have to stop the expansion of the hotel sector. Now, I saw some of the figures this morning, very interesting. If tourism demand for Spain is uh, rising per year with 6 or 7%, and the number of hotel beds in the 22 most important cities are just rising with 1.5% per year, it is obvious that the increase in demand 
has to be satisfied in another way. And ergo, hmm. Airbnb or excursionism is the consequence. Now, this is actually what happened in Venice. This 80, 80, 8, 0 percent of excursionists that come to Venice that is actually damaging the place much more than residential tourism, which is quality tourism. This, uh, ex uh, this expansion is the consequence of this hotel stop in the 80s and the 90s. So I would always advise hmm. places to be very careful with hotel stops. Obviously, uh, safeguarding, safeguarding the apartments that are needed to maintain uh, a, a, a livable, uh, viable and um, attractive city for people to stay and live in. But, for instance, uh, has the city a strategic plan? Well, the city was forced to make a strategic plan because UNESCO was uh, telling so, Venice, well, if you go on like this, with the cruise ships, with excursionism, with uh, all these rubbish kind of shops, we're going to put you on the blacklist. We're going to take you, you're, you're going to become endangered, World Heritage. Uh, now, because of, of this menace, because of this threat of UNESCO, uh, some people in the, in the city go and they just put together a management plan which was absent for 35 or 40 years or so. They put it together. But this is all, uh, I'm, I'm afraid, uh, just uh, a, a bureaucratic and formal response to a threat rather than really um, willing to change the vision on tourism development and act accordingly. And according to your, your point of view, what things and um, what measures are urgent yeah. to implement according to your point of view as a technical, not as a... Yeah, 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 yeah. okay. Yes. So what I think is that, that it is without doubt, because I, I don't want to demonize tourism, because tourism is a very important economic activity, and if tourism is managed very well, it is really an engine for social and economic development, change, for jobs, for income, for new facilities and infrastructure that everybody benefits from. But you need to manage it well. Now, for me, managing tourism well is first of all, and we are doing that, for example, in the context of the Alta Eco uh, project together with, the, with, mm -hmm. with Valencia. First of all, is measuring tourism in a modern way. Uh, and that means that we have to really get rid of this idea that in terms of arrivals and bed nights we understand what actually happens. Eh? That was the, the quantitative kind of approach. We have to embrace open and big data kind of techniques to gather new data on new touristic phenomena to manage tourism in a sort of almost real-time kind of way. Mm. Uh, we saw some pictures of uh, mobile phone kind of uh, data, but we are now scraping, for example, TripAdvisor data with a team from the University of Venice. We are scraping Airbnb, we are stealing data from those sort of social kind of uh, phenomena to really understand what the people that visit Venice are doing. So this is for me the first understand tourism, measuring it in a more comprehensive and in a real uh, time kind of way. Mm. A second uh, thing is to start informing people about a place before they come to visit you. I mean, I saw this uh, made in San Sebastian kind of brochure, which is really very interesting, but this is the stuff that you uh, g give to people when they're coming hmm. to the tourist office in the airport, or hmm. then you're already too late to start to educate, to inform, and to, to make... Hard. Yeah, you have to start okay. informing people when they're at home. And I think that you should be doing that, trying to see whether you can uh, invent some kind of reservation mechanism for people to your place. 
to book a visit to Venice is not so futuristic as it was 10 years ago. You have a very strong Valencia card, we have a Venice card, so why not sort of try to convince tourists that if they come to your place, whether they're sleeping with you or whether they're just visiting you for a day, they should at, at least announce their coming. We don't mm. want sort of improvising kind of guests. You can prevent and, and organize. In change of that, you give them a lot of advantage. You, you may give them this discount card. If you come to Venice, you get a Venice card, and Venice is going to be easy and cheap. And so if you announce your visit, we, public sector administration, we can cater for your needs the best we can, and you will be really satisfied of your visit. Your experience will be... If you're not willing to do that, you can still come to my place, to Venice, but it's like when you're a, a host, and if, if a friend of you is just dropping in, he can't expect to have a full uh, dinner with, uh, with vodka and everything. You see, you may not have that in your home, but mm -hmm. if he announces himself, you can prepare for that. Mm -hmm. Thirdly, I think we should also try to uh, change our... Because I'm very much in favor of residential tourism, and I'm very much worried about excursion. This is one of my red mm -hmm. sort of threats in all my research, and I've, I've, I've been feeling and seeing confirmation of this in a lot of places that I've been, I've been working for. Um, I think the tourism tax that is, uh, for example, uh, based on overnight stays is a wrong concept. I, I really sort of tax people just for the movement <coughs> they're making from somewhere in the world to my place, to, to, to Venice mm. or to Valencia or whatever. I don't like the idea of punishing our value-added kind of clients and leaving sort of our day tourism, which are not staying in our hotels, but pay hotel taxes maybe 100 kilometers uh, in the countryside. And, and, and I would also change, therefore, the tax base, which is traditionally uh, on hotel beds, change that uh, for a mobility kind in of mobility. based tax. Last but not least, I really would, uh, and that was also mentioned before, I would really sort of try to see whether I could do more for the non-touristical activities, whether they're residential or also economic, so that there is a, a counterforce, which is almost as powerful as the force that the tourism industry is uh, putting in, in pushing and competing for, uh, for central space. So, for example, in Venice, we are now very much investing in all kinds of activities linked with uh, u university education. Mm -hmm. See whether students and student housing can be put into place and maybe find some, um, some economic activities that students then, after their, uh, their studies, can start to work in, stay in Venice as an inhabitant, and just sort of keep the traditions, keep the, mm -hmm. the heart of the destination as alive as possible. And I think this is also relevant for other kinds of places. We are doing and seeing the same in Bruges, where the city center in Flanders, where the city center is, 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 is without a heart anymore. It's just chocolate shops and lace shops and bells and beer. But there's no sort of, no, no, and I think that is no, no heart, no soul in the place, and that is, in the end, destroying everything. Not only the city, not only the citizens, not only the local industry, but also the tourism industry in the end. Okay, so we, uh, uh, estamos un poquito ya fuera de, de tiempo. Thank you. Gracias. Eh?